Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Tigers outfielder J.D. Martinez has been absolutely red hot. So much so, in fact, that he's been voted the American League Player of the Week. 458 this week with four home runs for Martinez. J.D. and the Tigers invade Seattle tonight, game one in this three-game series. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Jack Morris. Glad to have you with us here tonight for game one in this series. J.D. Martinez, Jack, has been absolutely on fire. He has also learned he's going to be an all-star this year, but uh, several of his teammates will join him as well. It's got to be an exciting time for J.D. Not only is he having the best first half of his career, named Player of the Week this week for the American League, uh, the Tigers just need his bat. They need him to continue to carry the kind of stick that he's been carrying here for the last month and a half because Miguel Cabrera out of the lineup, they're going to need him to continue to stay hot as long as he possibly can. Jose Iglesias, David Price also selected for the Tigers. They are the All-Stars this year representing the old English knee. Now, as far as the Mariners are concerned, they can't hit, and, and that's just been a problem all season long. They can pitch, though. Nelson Cruz, one of the guys in their lineup that's done very well. Yeah, nicknamed the Boomstick, uh, Nelson Cruz has been hitting for quite some time, actually, with the Texas Rangers, then with Baltimore. He was acquired by the Mariners to do just this kind of thing, put the ball in the seats, and he's got that home run swing, very short, compact swing, but very powerful. He's been doing a good job and will be the starting designated hitter for the American League. The Mariners have also had Edgar Martinez in their past being the starting designated hitter. So those two in the DH spot in the history of the M's. Nelson Cruz being rewarded for an outstanding year this year. Now on the negative side for the Mariners, Robbie Cano was signed to a huge deal last year. He has really had a struggle this season. Well, they're coming out lately with a report that he's going through some stomach ailment. But Robbie Cano has struggled a little bit this year. Untypical of what he's done all those years with the Yankees, always around 300 plus. But uh, he has hit a little bit better in the last week. He's a guy that definitely is needed in the lineup for the Mariners in order for them to get, kind of get back on track because their pitching has been very good and they're hitting just uh, not, not good enough to give them a run support. All right, let's talk a little bit about the pitching. The Tigers a little bit fortunate here because they will not see King Felix in this series. Alfredo Simon will get it going against the Iwakuma tonight. And it's a big game for Alfredo. He's got to get back on track. He himself has struggled a lot of hits in his last three starts. But a good chance to win a game here tonight. Iwakuma has not pinched since early April. He was out with a strained right lat muscle, which is your deceleration uh, part of your arm in your right uh, side of your arm to, to slow your arm after you throw a ball. So it'll be interesting to see how he responds after coming off the deal. Ryan and Sanchez, the next two dice for the Tigers as well. Now the Tigers trying to kind of get it going here. The Tigers, of course, struggling with the loss in the last game of the homestand. We'll see if the West Coast will treat them well. After a short break, let's head to the Call Sam Studios. Check in with John Keating. Coming up, game one. It's the first and only meeting of the season in this park between these two teams. Tigers M. game one next.
started. Game one in this series. The Tigers starting a road trip that will butt up against the All-Star break. Their starting lineup tonight presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers. It will be in Kinsler starting things off at second base. You want to Cespedes in left. Victor Martinez, the DH, J.D., the player of the week in right field. Avila will catch. Castellanos at third. Bottom three tonight features Ghost Romine at first base. And Jose Iglesias is batting ninth playing short. And the Tigers are facing Hisashi Iwakuma. Iwakuma coming back uh, from a disabled list after spending quite some time there with a right lat strain. That's the muscle that decelerates your arm. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. It's his first start since the 20th of uh, April. And so Iwakuma will face a Tigers offense that, of course, has been restructured a bit over the past couple of days. Brad Osmus has Ian Kinsler leading off, followed by Cespedes in the two spot, and then Victor Martinez on a gorgeous night for baseball here in the great Northwest. Tigers play three here, and then it's on to Minnesota for a four-game series. Iwakuma is set to go to work, and here we go. First pitch of the ball game tonight is high. One ball to no strikes on Ian Kinsler. 269 for Kinsler. He's knocked in 36 runs. Here is Iwakuma's 1 0. That's high. Two balls, no strikes. Kinsler, very good numbers off of Iwakuma. 391 lifetime. He also had a really good homestand. He had 14 hits on the homestand, which bumped his average up a little bit. The 2 0 pitch is ripped foul down the third base line. Two and one on Kinsler. Here are the numbers on Kinsler in the last homestand. 333. And uh, you saw that he had that really rough stretch over his previous 30 games. Under 200 in that stretch. Two one is fouled off uh, accidentally. Didn't mean to do that. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Kinsler, another one of the Tigers that needs to stay hot uh, with Miggy out. Of the lineup, the, the boys have to kind of chip in and do their part to keep the ship heading in the right direction. And Kinsler certainly heating up a little bit is a good sign. Cespedes waiting on deck. Now the 2-2. Two -two. That'll get fouled down the right field line. When you lose a bat like Miguel Cabrera, who is considered widely as the best hitter in the game right now, it's... I wonder, Jack, if some of these guys in this lineup feel they have to do maybe a little bit too much to replace him. Well, I hope that's not the case because uh, whenever you start pressing, no matter what position you play, it seems to be a bad deal. You've just got to stay within yourself. Breaking ball hammered to left field. On the move toward the corner is Ackley still going. He'll make the catch. Let's take a look at the Mariners' starting defense brought to you by Tim Hortons. Out in left field will be Justin Ackley, Austin Jackson in center, Seth Smith out in right. At shortstop is Brad Miller, Robinson Cano at second. First base Morrison, third base Seeger, and Mike Zanuno. Zanino is catching Kasaki Iwakuma. So the Tigers now will send up Joanna Cespedes, which brings us to our Bernstein advantage, the pitcher batter matchup. Cespedes, boy, look at these numbers against Iwakuma. Over 400. And he looks at strike one. Every hitter's got a couple pitchers that they seem to see the ball very well. And for Cespedes, Iwakuma is one of those guys. Iwanis batting 292 is in the final vote. Tigers hoping to get him to the All-Star game as well. Yeah, talking with Brad Austin before the game, it's the one guy that he's a little disappointed that he hasn't been chosen by Ned Yost. Balser right back to the mound. Iwakuma. Reaction play. Two gone. Cespedes robbed there. A ball hit back up the middle. Well, you throw the ball. You're about 55 feet away, and this is just defending yourself, really. But he did square up nicely to the hitter. He's not with his body way out of control, falling way off the mound. He squared up pretty good. Well, here is Victor Martinez now with two outs. Victor elevated to the three spot with the absence of Miguel Cabrera. 249 for Victor. It was just a couple of weeks ago. He was in the 220 range, but has hit well since coming off the disabled list. Ball one low. 
especially from the left side Mario he's uh, he was really struggling trying to push off at all with his left knee. Here's the 1 0. Saw the shift that they have on against uh, Victor. It's not nearly as severe as most teams will play. In fact, usually they'll have the second baseman in short right field. They have the shortstop on the other side of the bag. The numbers for the uh, the Mariners indicate they don't want to shift that severely. And Victor, I think, has showed a willingness to go the other way, and that may skew your charts a little bit. Yeah, he can definitely shoot the ball to the left side. Iwakuma is going to pitch him away, and we'll have to watch that. Victor certainly will go with the ball when he needs to. They're setting up away. Lifted high in the air to center field. Austin Jackson coming in. Iwakuma, fresh off the DL, has a 1 2 3 first inning. Your face, Austin Jackson, the former Tiger, will start things off. The lineup for the M's presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Jackson, Seeger, Cano in the top three spots. Cruz and All-Stars, the DH, Smith and Morrison. And then you've got Ackley, Miller, and Zanino rounding it out for the M's. And uh, Alfredo Simon today presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Alfredo needs to kind of get back on track. He's got a pretty good record still. ERA very respectable, under four. But uh, he's given up a lot of hits in his last three starts, so he needs to get kind of back on track here tonight. And we'll see if he can do it against an offense that, uh, well, to be honest, has struggled this year. This is not an offense in Seattle that has put up big numbers. Quite the opposite, as a matter of fact. Alfredo goes to work as Jackson leads it off. And he looks at ball one. Austin batting 254 this year. He's hit three home runs. He has slowed a little bit here in the month of July, just two for 17. Bouncing ball left side by Castellanos, but Iglesias has it and throws him out. Another all star play by an all star shortstop. One away. Let's take another look at this play. You see Iglesias going hard to his right, Castellano going to his left, does not get to the ball, but on the run, Iglesias makes a nice, accurate throw over to. Romine at first base playing there for Miggy. One gone that'll bring up Kyle Seeger. The number two hitter for the M's. Seeger has 12 homers this year so he provides some pop out of the two spot in their lineup. Seattle coming into play tonight at 38 and 44. Ball one. As we watch Alfredo Simon we've got to kind of keep an eye on how many times he gets ahead in the count that's been part of his problem as of late is getting behind too many hitters and then having to throw balls over the plate which they're ready for and he's fallen behind Seeger here 2 and 0 I had a conversation with 
pitching coach Jeff Jones about Alfredo and he said he's just been getting behind too many guys and I asked him what he's doing to correct that and he said he's trying to have him rotate a little bit more on the mound keep him over the rubber a little longer and that might prevent him from flying open and getting ahead of himself. Well here are the splits for Simon you see his last three the ERA is 11.05. Compared to those first 12 starts, which were all star worthy until that uh, bump in the road, the last three. 2 1 is ripped and fouled down the right field line. And it's not just about those last two starts, but the track record that Simon's had over last year. He started out with a great first half and then just fizzled in the second half as a member of the Reds and now starting to show signs of the same thing. So, you know, it's something the Tigers are going to be. Aware of trying to make sure that he doesn't fall into that same rut. Here's the 2 2. Seeger backs out of there 3 and 2. Yes, yeah, Simon last year won 12 ball games pre All Star break with the Reds. In the second half, he was 3 and 7. There's Cano waiting on deck. Here's the full count pitch. He lost it ball four. Well, Seeger takes first base on a walk. Let's look at the Tigers starting defense. That's presented by Bill Fox Chevrolet. Cespedes goes and J.D. Martinez in the outfield. Jose Iglesias and Ian Kinsler up the middle. Romine at first replacing Miguel Cabrera and Nick Castellanos at third. Alex Vila again catching. And Alfredo Simon on the mound. Well, Avila was playing first base the last couple of days. Romine gets an opportunity today. The Tigers, of course, brought Marte up from the minor leagues. He'll get a chance as well. And the Tigers claim Mark Kraus off waivers today. So he will join the team eventually and get some opportunities there. Ball one to Robinson Cano. Been a subpar year for Cano, batting just 248. Those are not typical Robinson Cano numbers. Everybody is. Very well aware of what he's done over the, his career, being awarded the highest free agent contract in Mariners history. He signed through 2023, I believe. Whoa. Basically, a life contract. Yeah, pretty much. He's going to be here a while. And it's this time of the year where Cano is uh, usually looking forward to going to the All Star game, but not this year. And well, you see the ranks. Yeah, those are the concerns that the Mariners have. And that's just not Robbie Cano's. Type of numbers. One on one out just underway here in Seattle tonight. Game one in this series. Glad to have you along with us. Simons 2 0. Ground ball left side. Going to find a hole. Base hit. Seeger will hold up at second base. And now the M's have two men on. Well, let's take a look at how the defense was playing. You can see the shift slight up the middle and had the shortstop Iglesias been playing in his normal position, that ball would have been right at him. But the good hitters seem to know where the infielders are playing and have the kind of bat control to be able to shoot the ball where they're not. Tony Gwynn is the name that comes to mind. A yeah. lot of guys that face Gwynn would just say he just he would be able to shift on the fly based on what the defense was doing. So here is Nelson Cruz, an all star this year as the DH in the American League. For all of the struggles Seattle has had this year offensively, this guy is not struggling. No. And he's the one guy in the lineup that the starting pitcher and all the relievers have to be aware of. You don't want to see him be the guy to ruin your day. He's got the ability to put it in the seats through all the different parts of this ballpark. Vila goes down to get that one and once again Simon is falling behind a hitter 2 and 0. Oh. Well there's a base open one out you've got Nelson Cruz up right now Seth Smith the on deck hitter. Not the easiest guy to double up Smith runs fairly well but you just don't want to give in to Cruz here and give him a cookie. One out walk to Seeger single by Cano. And now the 2 0 pitch. Strike call 2 and 1 on Cruz. 
Yeah, might have caught a break there. Cruz kind of wondering if that ball was up. But Alfredo just been struggling to get ahead. He's been behind every hitter. You got the benefit of the yeah, doubt there. Upper quadrant to the strike zone there. Two and one on Cruz. Ground ball, third base side, foul. That'll level the count now. Two balls, two strikes. Cruz this year has 20 go ahead RBIs, which is tied for the most in the major leagues. He has been able to anchor the middle of the Seattle lineup, but it's a lineup that has not posted very good numbers this year. Their offense is last in the American League in hits, average on base percentage. And the fact that they play in a pitcher's ballpark, I'm sure, doesn't really help a whole lot either. At least for the guys, they hit the ball a long way. Now, Cruz given time. And to kind of put in perspective and comparison, Nelson Cruz, starting designated hitter from the American League All Star game this year, and his numbers very similar to J.D. Martinez, other than batting average, home run, slugging percentage, all those things. They a lot of similar numbers. Ooh, we chased one. It gets away from Avila, who can't find it. And the runners will advance. Cruz is going to be out. It'll be a strikeout and a wild pitch advancing the runners. So Simon ends up striking him out for the second out of the inning. You see a breaking ball that's down. That's probably a splitter right there. Breaks down. Avila did not react very well to it. He tries to backhand it instead of getting his body and chest out in front of it and keeping it in front of him. And that is enough to get the runners over in the scoring position. Two gone for Seth Smith with two men in scoring position. Smith, the right fielder, batting 257. That would go down as a wild pitch, but I'm sure Alex Avila is very aware that he could have done a better job of trying to block that ball. Here is where Seattle has really struggled this year, Jack. Their uh, team average with runners in scoring position is 208. And that's yeah. just not going to get it yeah, done. That's terrible. That's uh, that's part of their biggest problem. They've had very good starting pitching, third in the league in that department, and and yet they're only averaging about 3.7 runs a game. So hard to win that way. Swing and a miss. Good splitter right there. That's a one two. He needs to throw another one right there. He's got him ahead in the count. It's a swing and miss pitch for Simon. That's his split finger. And when you see a hitter miss by that much, you want to throw it in the same spot, if not just a tad lower. Simon went 2-0 to Seeger, 2-0 to Cano, 2-0 to Cruz, and <laughs> now he's gotten ahead. This is a this is a part of the game that's probably challenging for both guys. Simon has about six different pitches, huh. and Alex is trying to figure out which one he wants to throw right here. Swing and a miss. There he struck him out. Good splitter right there. Gets the second strikeout. And the Mariners will strand two. We'll go to the second in Seattle. No score.
Tigers coming up here against Iwakuma. Have J.D. Martinez, Alex Avila, Nick Castellanos. Iwakuma, a 1-2-3 first inning. And the brand-new All-Star, J.D. Martinez, looks at ball one. I guess we should congratulate him, making the All-Star team for the first time and well-deserving of that. 23 home runs, 56 RBI, just having a great first half for the Tigers. What an amazing journey it, it has to have been for J.D. Martinez, having been let go by Houston last year, and he joins the Tigers, had that huge April in the minor leagues just to even get a chance to go up to the big club. And he hadn't stopped hitting homer since. It's just another one of those wonderful stories of baseball and perseverance and just uh, internal fortitude and willingness to sacrifice and whatever it takes to keep improving. He's done it all. I would imagine a whole lot of believing in himself as yeah. well. And and what's what's a great part of this story is that now JD's had the success. He's finally done things correctly. So that's imprinted in his mind. And when he starts struggling again, he'll reflect back on those good days. That's bounced to Brad Miller and one gone. And let's check in with Mickey York. Mick. All right, Mario, thank you very much. You know, a quick scan of the Mariners dugout, and you'll realize that Lloyd McClendon, the manager, is not with the team. In fact, Lloyd will miss the entire series following the unexpected death of his sister. But Lloyd's absence means we won't get a repeat of his performance here on June 2nd. Uh, Lloyd ejected that night after arguing balls and strikes, and this has become known as the everybody gets some tirade because not one umpire on the field was spared Lloyd's wrath that night. Trent Jewett will handle the managerial duties in Lloyd's absence for the remainder of this series. He said in preparation, he did not go over his ejection game plan. Probably just as well, Mario and Jack, because Lloyd is a tough act to follow in that regard. He is. Thanks, Mick. We appreciate it. Trent Jewett uh, is taking over as the acting manager, the bench coach for Lloyd. But really, Jack, more importantly, our uh, thoughts and prayers yeah. to uh, Lloyd for the Absolutely. loss of his sister. What a tremendous baseball man. And more than that, just a tremendous friend, a real good guy. Alex of, Vila stepping in. Part of the Tiger scene for quite a few years under Jim Leland. Yeah, no doubt. Did a fantastic job. And now the skipper of the M's. Here's the 1 1 to Avila. 2 and 1 on Alex, who is catching in the ballgame tonight. We watch Iwakuma pitch, and he's a guy that rarely throws a ball straight. He's got tremendous movement on all his pitches. See that running fastball right there. It's not the velocity so much as deception and movement. So two strikes in the count. Now the Tigers shifting. They or the uh, Mariners shifting rather. They have uh, Miller staying on the left side of the infield. That's it. Iwakuma doesn't have a lot of drive off his push leg, his back leg. But he squares up to the hitter and all his momentum is going towards the catcher's glove, which is the way you want your pitchers to throw. Seeger, the third baseman, sliding over to the right of the bag at second. And a wave and a miss. Didn't matter, struck him out. Iwakuma has retired five in a row to start this one. Make your plans to tune us in after the ball game tonight for Tigers Live post game. We'll select our Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game, presented by McDonald's Big Mac and 10 piece McNuggets. So, with two outs, here is Nick Castellanos. We talked about Kinsler having a good homestand and perking up. Castellanos the same. Nick hit 343 on the homestand. And just I guess in the nick of time, so to speak, because he really was struggling. And now the Tigers had to sit him down a few days, try and get him straightened out. Iwakuma is ahead of the count, 0 and 1. Drill deep to left field, way back to the track, to the wall, and that ball is gone. Oh, Castellanos put a hurt on that one. 
and the Tigers have a one nothing lead. Tigers fans have been kind of waiting for Nick to get hot. That was a very similar swing to what J.D. Martinez has been doing. Just great extension out in front of the plate. Let's take a look at the swing. Pulls his hands in. Throws the head of the bat on the ball and just, as they say, barrels it up. He knew it. First home run since May the 21st against Houston. It had been a while since Nick was able to touch them all. He gives the Tigers the lead. Anthony Go stands in. So Nick continues to swing the bat well. Really good news for the Tigers. Go shoots one in the air to right center field. That ball is hit well, and that one is going to go all the way to the wall. This might be a triple for Ghost. He's rounding second. He's coming to third. No relay. It's a three base hit for Anthony Ghost. It might have been close. Robinson Cano bobbled the ball a little bit as part of the relay. You can see Austin Jackson running after the ball, and here we go. Jackson to his left. Ball's in the gap. Goes all the way to the wall. He picks it up cleanly and makes a nice throw to Cano, but Cano. Just bobbles the ball. It might have been a little closer. Robinson Cano has a very good arm. But Ghost smelled three all the way. And you can see the gear that just kicked in as three rounds for his face. I get a kick out of that hit. If runners would run out of the box the way they do once they see the balls by the outfielders. Inside could, the park they, home run? Yeah. <laughs> it's the fourth triple of the year for Ghost. And now the Tigers have a chance to get another run in. How many times do you hear it at the youth level? The manager, coaches are preaching to all the kids, don't watch the ball, just run. Yeah, but it's fun to watch. Ah, it. You can. It's human nature. <laughs> of course. One ball to no strikes. Uh, Romine, who looks at a strike. I could just hear go say, hey, you guys get to watch it. Why can't I? That's right. Because you got to run. I think it is human nature. I think, you, you know, you make good contact, sure. a good swing on the ball. Well, you want to see where, you know. If you hit it right at somebody in the old Adam ball and you kind of hang the head because you know that you just got robbed, you walk back. You tap her back to the mound. This will get Iwakuma out of the inning. However, the Tigers get a run. They do it on the long ball. Nick Castellanos goes deep. A no doubter. It was his fifth of the year. Bang. The Tigers lead 1-0. was voted as the starter at first base, but it was learned that Iglesias, J.D. Martinez, David Price are named as reserves. And we want to congratulate all those guys. All of them deserve 
being on that team and hopefully represent the Tigers well given the opportunity to be in the game. Well Price and Miggy are vets those guys uh, know what it's all about but it's it's really fun to see the sure. reactions of Iglesias and J.D. Really well deserved and it's ripped right into the shift. Castellanos has it that'll be a 5 3 ground out to retire Morrison. One away here in the second. That's one time where the shift took one away. And again Alfredo Simon kind of getting away with a mistake pitch that ball was up and Morrison was not fooled but Tigers doing a good job of positioning their infielders to make a play. Dustin Ackley stands in batting just 206. Ackley this year has hit five home runs. Seattle put two men on in the first a walk and a single but. They got a couple of strikeouts to end the inning. Simon pitched out of that mess. One ball, one strike. You get an idea of the kind of command Simon will have by watching the center field camera when you see Avila and when he sets his glove, how far away is it that the pitcher misses or hits the glove? Does it remain in the strike zone? Is it out of the zone? Does he miss by an inch or miss by a foot? Gives you a pretty good indication of whether he's dialed in. Sometimes it takes a couple innings to get used to the game mound versus the bullpen mound. Is you know I know it's supposed to be a uniform around baseball, but is is each mound different? You know they are. Um, they are supposed to be uniform. They're supposed to be the same slope, uh, all 10 inches high. Uh, you know since they changed that rule after the '68 season, but. Uh, it's inevitable that they're all a little bit different. Lifted in the air toward left. Cespedes is cruising back. Two up, two down. Mario, I think what really is the bigger difference is the difference between the bullpen mounds mm -hmm. and the field mound. I think across baseball, most field mounds are pretty similar. But a lot of the bullpen mounds, just because of the way they're groomed and the way, you know, they don't. They don't go out and measure them as often. They don't make sure that they're all completely fixed. There's a lot of guys throwing off them every day. The bullpen guys have to get their work. The starters do their in between work. So those mounds get beat up quite a bit. Brad Miller fouls it back. Well, David Price would agree with you. He came to the ballpark yeah. today to throw a, uh, a bullpen session and had to bring a rake out there to, <laughs> to rebuild the mound. <laughs> because it was too flat apparently. So your point is well taken. Well there's nothing more fun for a starter than complain about things. <laughs> I'm guilty of it. I did it most of the time and to tease the ground crew about what a mess they haven't been working haven't been doing their job. Slice to center field base hit for Miller. Two out single for Seattle. It'll be their second hit of the game. Now Miller not waiting around to see that split finger from Simon. He jumps on that high fastball. Here's Mike Zanino who's batting 162. Yet he has nine home runs this year. He had about a week and a half two week period where you thought he was going to be the next superstar in the game earlier in the season and since then has kind of cooled off. Keep an eye on Miller at first base. He has seven steals. There's the ball outside, 1 0. Now, here are the first pitch strikes. For Alfredo Simon, he's only thrown three of the first nine hitters, first pitch strikes. So getting behind, not a good formula for anybody. Ground ball left side, deep in the hole. Iglesias will flip to first, and they get him on a one hop throw by Jose. He knew the runner, knew he had time, and he throws out Zanino to end the inning. Another sparkling play by Jose Iglesias. Yeah, getting rid of the ball in a hurry. 
Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire. So special for me, it's it's be away from from a game for a year, uh, with stress fractures, you know, deal with tough time at home, and now be back and help this team each and every day, and be healthy and and be a, be an honor by by being an All Star game. So, um, it's that makes it more special for myself. Absolutely, yes. Well, it really has been a special year for Iglesias, not only with the glove but with the bat. We'll see batting 323 coming in good for fourth in the American League. Yeah, he was a guy that, you know, he bats deep in the order, usually ninth. And I think a lot of the league in baseball in general takes him for granted, but you can't deny his numbers. He's had a very, very good first half and defensively he've already showed us two plays today that uh, He's above average in that part. Well, let's talk about that. Do you think pitchers psychologically, when they get to seven, eight, and nine in the lineup, tend to take the uh, foot off the gas pedal? Well, a bit? I don't think they do, but I don't think you see a lot of 320 hitters hitting ninth. True. You know, and guys that put the ball in play the way Glacius can. You're usually seeing a guy that, you know, is is usually got some speed, but doesn't make great contact all that often. Lacey is retired there on the tapper back to the mound. It's the third time tonight the Tigers have hit a ball right back to Iwakuma. Iwakuma does a very good job of squaring up to the hitter. He becomes the fifth infielder after he releases the ball. And, you know, he's in position to help his team by using his glove. Watch his delivery here and how he just squares up. He's in a position to react. Here is Ian Kinsler. The Tigers took a 1 0 lead on a two out solo shot by Castellanos. Here's in the second. Checked it, and they will appeal. Yes, he went around, said Kerwin Danley. 0 oh 2 on Kinsler. Veteran umpire and crew. Kerwin Danley, longtime umpire Joe West behind the plate. Rob Drake at second, JD Rayburn at third. Just miss. You were Kuba last year for Seattle. Won 15 games at an ERA of about three and a half was really good. High fly ball, shallow left field. Dustin Ackley coming in, and there are two gone. 
Well, the Tigers take on the Orioles on July 17th through the 19th at Comerica Park. Tickets still available. If you'd like them, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com for more information. Two away for Ioannis Cespedes. Cespedes hit a bullet back to the mound that Iwakuma threw his glove out, flagged down. Sends a ground ball to third, foul. Well, there's a chance you can get Cespedes, who, by the way, is the defending uh, home run hitting contest champ back to back. And try to get him in there. Cespedes, Bogarts, a couple of other guys that are deserving as well. Yeah. We looked at all those guys that are the final vote candidates and decided that let's put them all in. What the heck? This isn't the <laughs> Hall of Fame. It's an all-star game. And they all have great numbers and they've all had good halves. And it's hard to well, pick one out of that group, don't the, you think? The problem with that is there are some GMs that are going to pay some bonuses for some guys you know, that have to go. They're the making game. enough money. Just pay the guys. <laughs> Heck, we're sacrificing. Yeah. I mean, you know, take some of ours. We don't need it. Wait, wait a minute. We need to take some of ours. <laughs> well, they already did. Didn't they? That's what I meant. Let's rain that back. <laughs> Come on, Mario. We These guys go in the booth a, have their hands out now. We, yeah, we, we, we go to a ball game every night. I can't argue with you there. Not at all. One and two on Cespedes. We'll talk about this during yeah, the break. Yeah, I, I guess we'll re we'll reevaluate that comment. There's a swing and a miss, and Cespedes is out of there. Iwakuma has a one, two, three, third. of what a bank can be when it's time come to Comerica Chrysler start your summer in style at the Chrysler 4th of July sales event and by Stacy's chips that's the Stacy's way and we're not messing with it nice shot of Elliott Bay here in the great northwest it is one nothing in favor of the Tigers they're in Seattle tonight to start a three game series here against the M's Austin Jackson will start things off for Seattle as the big pasta Alfredo Simon goes back to work. Jackson Seeger Cano in the third. Jackson bounced out his first time up. And Simon delivers a strike 1 1. Jackson right now scuffling a bit. 2 for 18 in the month of July. was part of the trade that brought David Price to Detroit. Hey, you look back at some of the center fielders that the Tigers have had Curtis Granderson Austin Jackson both great guys very good defensive center fielders and yet we're in different uniforms now. 
blown away. Well, Jackson made some of the best catches you will see ever made at Comerica Park. And he was a uh, highlight film out there in center field. The Tigers hated to give him up, but the deal that brought Price really strengthened their rotation down the stretch. 3 1 pitch. 3 2 now on Jackson. We'll take a look at Alfredo Simon with 3 2 count. Nobody out here, top of the third or bottom of the third inning. What pitch does he feel confident that he can throw for a strike? Slider, change of fastball away. And that's what he's going to try to throw. It is pretty funny, though, when you watch a catcher go through all the signals, all the pitches that uh, Simon can throw and has in his arsenal. Avila behind the dish flashing signs. And you tonight. wonder, you know, why is it that the catcher throws a sign but the pitcher has the right to call it? Well, the pitcher knows what he feels the most confident with. And there's a lot of times you know it's not the right pitch in the situation. It's totally a certain. Let's say a guy just shows that he cannot hit a breaking ball. But if I'm the pitcher and I know that I can't spot my breaking ball and I don't feel he's going to chase it, I can't throw it in that situation. I might have to throw the. The pitch the hitter has the best chance of of hitting just because I'm more confident with that and rather locating it I feel better I can locate that pitch so it's a it's a mind game really for both sides so the leadoff man is the board here time for a game break here's Johnny Kane. All right, Johnny Twins four and a half back at Kansas City postponed tonight because of rain with the Royals Tigers six back. Lead off man on here in the third for Seattle and will bring up Kyle Seeger. How many times would you see in your career Jack where you talked into throwing something that you didn't want to in a big spot and you gave up a big play? Well Mario there's more to this story than that. I mean certainly not that many times quite honestly because I wanted to. I, I was convicted to throw what I felt was the best pitch for me. Now that doesn't mean it was the right pitch to throw. And yet I remember early in my career, uh, Milt May being the catcher when I was young, would call pitches that I had no confidence in. But the whole idea was to teach me to throw it. You have to throw. And we talked about it with a couple of the Tiger pitchers this year that early in the game, you just can't live and die with one pitch. Even though it's not there, you have to throw your breaking ball. And for me, it was commanding my slider. I didn't feel comfortable early, but he would call it anyway because sooner or later I'd start throwing it for strikes. And it was more because he called it. He kept calling it, knowing that hitters are sitting on fastballs. So let's throw it. Even if you miss, it still has a purpose. And uh, sooner or later, you you start getting better command with it. And when maybe late in the game, you have con control of it where you can use it in situations where you know that the hitter's sitting on a fastball. You got to stick with him. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, Simon again throwing back to first base, chasing Jackson back there. there. Been very, very few guys that can live and die with one pitch. Obviously, Mariano Rivero did it, and it was a super pitch. That cutter of his. Yeah, but he pitched one inning though. He was one not inning. a starter. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, whole different story for for those closers than it is for a starter. Runner goes on 1 0 pitch out throw down to second and it's going to hit the runner and roll away from the bag. That'll be a stolen base. So Jackson gets himself in a scoring position. Well, you can see it's a pitch out but Alex Avila has a tough time getting rid of this ball and then he makes a throw that's a little bit off. Iglesias doesn't command it because basically Austin Jackson slides into the ball. But again, a good jump by Austin Jackson, even though it was a pitch up. So now Seeger a chance to tie this ball game up. Here's the 2 0. And how many times do we talk about a leadoff walk coming back to haunt you already? Jackson in scoring position. He's falling behind again, another hitter. It's, uh, it's just. I, I know I sound like I'm negative about Alfredo Simon, but he's got to command his pitches better 
And that's one thing Jeff Jones talked about with me before the game is that he's falling behind too many guys. He's swinging 3 0 and he drives one deep to center field. Ghost will go all the way to the track to make the catch. Jackson will go back and tag up and move up. So he took a shot on 3 0 and nearly hit it out. Time run at third now. Take a look at the swing here. The pitch up in the zone. 3 0, and that's where you get in trouble. Seeger drives it all the way to the warning track. Ghost does a nice job of getting to it, but Austin Jackson, just good base runner, smart guy with speed. He kind of reads it, jumps back to the bag, tags up, and easily gets the third base. So with Cano up there, the infield will come in for Detroit. Robinson had a single in the first inning. And now Brad Osmus has got to play his infield in. Everybody's up even with the bag or on the grass on the left side. Are there certain types of hitters that you were leery in throwing just a fastball over the plate on 3 0? Well, every every hitter is looking. That's the pitch they're looking for. 3-0. They're figuring you've got to throw it over. I'm just sitting on my favorite pitch to hit, which is the fastball. And sometimes you just got to roll the dice and say, you know what, the odds are in my favor. Seven out of ten times the hitter gets themselves out, so I'm going to roll the dice here. I'm in trouble. I got to throw it over because I don't want to walk again. Canolo hits one in the air, shallow right field. JD now goes. Ghost can handle it. And the run will not score. Oh, Ghost fires a bullet to the plate. So Cano is then able to drive in the run from third with less than two outs. Well, Ghost is calling JD off right there. He has control of it as the center fielder. And he's got a strong arm. Everybody knows that. It's just his accuracy that you sometimes roll your eyes about. This time Anthony Ghost throws a strike. Did not hit the cutoff man, but threw a strike right to Alex at home. And Austin Jackson being held up by Rich Donnelly, the third base coach. So it'll take a two out hit now from Cruz, who struck out with two men on in the first inning. Something that uh, you listeners at home can't can't sense that we just Sense and I want to bring it to your attention. Do you smell the salt air? Do you smell that I do breeze? actually, yes. Now that you mention it, we don't get that at America. No, we don't. It is different. Evening, gorgeous evening here in the Northwest. Yeah, I know we got out of the hotel today and the temperature was in the upper 80s, but it's turned into a spectacular night here in Seattle. No balls, one strike on Cruz. Grounded foul, and now he's in the hole, 0 and 2. And now here's a situation where Alfredo Simon has a few pitches to waste, so he can try to see if you'll chase him. For me, the best pitch for him to throw is his split finger and keep it down. Nelson Cruz is probably going to see it as a fastball down in the zone, and we'll see if he can swing out of the zone. It's up to Alex to make sure he blocks the ball. He's going to throw a change up here instead. And he went down and blocked. It. And as a catcher, this is where you really can give your pitcher confidence. And runner at third base being able to do just that right there. Get his body and chest out in front of it and block that ball. If you catch it, fine. If not, it's not going anywhere. It's going to be right out in front of the plate, and the runner can't advance. One two. Another block by Avila. Same pitch, same result. But those pitches still have meaning. You know, he's seeing if Cruz is over anxious to try drive in that run. Kind of seeing if he'll chase. Now at two two, you've got to throw a pitch that's a little more tempting. You don't want to go three two with one of the game's better power hitters. Jackson started things for the walk. He stole second, went to third on a fly ball, still standing there now with two outs. And he will go three and two, missed high. He came back with the slider and just we call that the old washing machine slider. It sort of spins for no apparent reason. 
Doesn't have any bite to it. Kind of got away with one. He's lucky he didn't leave that out over the plate more. You saw the ratio there after 50 pitches, almost 50-50 in terms of strikes and balls. Noah Fiedler running through the signals once again. Just got a piece of it to stay alive. Cruz made his fourth All-Star team this year. Spent a lot of years in the minor leagues before he got a, a brief opportunity with Milwaukee, but he really took off with the Texas Rangers. Spent a year in Baltimore last year and now in Seattle this year. When he left Texas, he pretty much left his glove down there, too. He's been predominantly a DH with Baltimore and now here in Seattle. He used to play a little bit outfield. Tipping the glove for strike three and Cruz strikes out for the second time in the ball game. Simon once again gets out of a jam. We played three in Seattle. Have a flashback to May 30th last year. Victor Martinez against Iwakuma, a 10 pitch at bat. You talk about a pitcher's nightmare, throwing 10 pitches and then giving up the bomb. That's just not a good day for the pitcher. Probably took 10 minutes. The guy hits a home run, and you uh, all of a sudden are really feeling bad about yourself. But welcome to the world of Victor Martinez. <laughs> he does that on a nightly basis, it seems. And they all don't all end up in home runs, but. He will battle you. He can work nail. the count. He is what we call a grinder in the game. Does not give away at bats. It'll be Martinez, then JD Martinez, and Avila facing Iwakuma. One ball, one strike. Hey, uh, check it off. Uh, check it out, rather. Al Kaline, Dustin Fielder, or Prince. We don't know. One of the two. Tiger fans. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swing and miss. He left the strike zone there. One and two on Victor Martinez. Victor with a couple of homers this year. He's knocked in 26, missed about a month. And uh, you see again the shift not nearly as severe as it normally is. Driven deep in the air to right field. That ball he might go, it. and that ball is got to go. He has gotten him again. Victor Martinez homers off Iwakuma, and it's 2 0 Detroit. Well, it didn't take 10 pitches this time, and it wasn't the same pitch, but it was the same result. Victor just drops the head on a breaking ball down in the zone, and this was a no doubter. A 
thing was hit so high for a second there. I thought it was going to catch that restaurant out in right field. A lot of the strike zone, but Victor does such a good job with bat control, squaring up so many balls. Third homer of the year for Martinez, 2 0 Tiger. Ball outside to JD Martinez. A couple of solo shots for Detroit tonight, Victor and Nick Castellanos. Drill to center field. Man, oh man, oh. that ball is going to be way out of here. Oh my goodness. Up against the batter's eye in dead center. J.D. Martinez celebrating his all star selection with that. Absolutely crushed it. The extension that J.D. gets, and we've talked about it a, a number of times, the sound of the ball off the bat is different with J.D. And you see where he squares that ball up. Number one, terrible pitch. Great hitter's pitch. But look at where he hits the ball. Out in front of the plate, total arm extension. The barrel of the bat hits the ball, and that's why it goes 420 feet. Tigers putting on a show here in the fourth. Two really long home runs, Victor and JD. We'll make uh, Wally Joyner happy. Three solo shots in this game for the Tigers. Three nothing lead. <laughs> There's just a sound that's different. And I, I, I think I know what it is. I think I, I realize that guys that have that kind of strength are able to grip the bat a little tighter in their hands so there's no vibration and so the bat makes the singing sound that's my guess i never thought of that i'll buy it i'm, I'm all in it's my guess I, I don't know i mean i don't have the answer to it people fly us out that'll be the first out of the inning well the tigers coming into seattle and knowing they've got to do well here this final week heading into the all-star break and Trying to make up some ground. They have gotten off to a nice start in this trip. Here's Castellanos. He extended his hitting streak to seven straight with his home run in his last at bat. He'll shoot that one back up the middle. And now it's batting practice for the Tigers here in the fourth. Let's check in now. The game break and Johnny Kane. All right, Johnny, how about Brian Dozier? Man. Well, he was another one of those guys on that last list to vote in. And I've watched Brian a lot this summer. No question in my mind that he's an all star. Here's Anthony Ghost. He had a triple back in the second, did not score though. Sends a ground ball to second base. Cano will tag the runner one and flip the first four the double play. Inning is over, not before the Tigers hit a couple of homers. Martinez and Martinez, the Martini, go deep.
One is always the one that's that's the most memorable and it's, it's, it's the most special one, you know. So uh, very happy for um, JD and, and Iglesias to, to be a part of that. And, you know, it's if they want to tag along with me, they're more than welcome to go anywhere I go. So it's, I'm happy for them. I'm still in the midst of, you know, texting my friends and my family and letting them know. And I'm like, forget it, D, D I'm just following you everywhere. <laughs> and he goes, don't worry, I'll show you. I'm like, follow me. I'm like, all right, deal. Well, once again, congratulations to J.D. Martinez, David Price, and Jose Iglesias, named as reserves on the all-star team for the American League. And you can see the excitement in J.D.'s face when he found out today that he was going to be an all-star. Well-deserved all the way around. Well, Simon now has a 3-0 lead to work with. Smith Morrison Ackley here in the fourth. Here's the shift they employ against Seth Smith. And that's the old right side shift. You've got Castellanos playing softball right field. Smith struck out in the first inning with a couple of runners in scoring position. You just wonder if baseball eventually adjusted this a little bit. Guys trying to shoot the ball to the left side. You only have Iglesias over there. A lot of room on the left side. Either that or push a bunt. Do you think, it, and I use the, the word ego, not in a bad way, but do you think players' egos in terms of hitters say, you know what, I'm still going to keep my approach. I can still beat the ship. I'm still going to hit it where I want to hit it. Well, I think that's the Ted Williams philosophy. It's like, you want to shift? I'll just hit it over your head. Jim Tomey had that same kind of philosophy. But if you really take a look at the situation, it's 3 nothing. Why not just push a ball down the line if you're, if you can't bunt down the line, you're in the big leagues. I don't get it. Pitchers are asked to do it. Here's Simon again, leadoff walk. He's flirting with the devil here today. Well, he had one in the first, he had one in the third. Now he's got one here in the fourth inning. And he does continue to flirt with disaster. And here is Logan Morrison. Well, Castellanos, who is shifting, will have to run over to the left side of the infield. Morrison grounded out his first time up 0 for 1. Simon has had to pitch from the stretch in every inning. He's had a lot of traffic so far in this game. Fouled away 0 1. Morrison now is 0 for his last 12. And they normally would be probably putting a slight shift on Morrison, which they are shading him a little bit up the middle with the Glacius and Castellanos. But you got a runner at first base, so you got to have somebody there in the double play position in case there's a ground ball hit right at one of the infielders. Couldn't hold up. Strike two. See the pitch here. Change up up in the zone. That's not exactly where you want to throw it, but had good tail to it. Eventually was caught about a foot off the plate. Rolled foul. Getting back to your point about guys bunting for base hits. When the shift is on, I kind of view bunting like free throw shooting. It's it's kind of a fundamental that most guys at this level should have, don't you? I, I totally agree with that. I mean, my goodness, it's one of the fundamentals you learn as a young player right. in, in the youth level to be able to put the ball down. And uh, I saw it. The Twins were playing Kansas City here in the last series, and I was working for the Twins in the pre and post game, and Mustakas and Hosmer both. Beat the shift on a bunt by just, you know, they're, they're playing way around to the right side. And all they did was push it towards third base. Nobody there, and they both helped their team. So I know it can be done. The question is, I mean, will more and more guys continue to do so? And if they do, then you will see some of these shifts kind of subside a little bit. Well, what it did, and here's here's the beauty of it. What it did is the next time the opportunity came. Paul Molitor did not shift his team on those two hitters. 
Did not go on that pitch. 2 2 on Morris. But I do understand the philosophy. I mean, a lot of times, a manager does not want to see a guy bunt at all. He wants him to put it in the seats in right field. Right. Or, you know, right hander's case, left field. So to beat the bunt and get a base hit, that's not the objective. The objective is to put one in the seats. Pulled foul on the first baseline. Ooh, nice pickup down there. Did you see that? She's got a glove. She's qualified. Yeah, but that ball was hit pretty hard. Let's take a check. Check on, check on the defense here. One hopper keeps her head, head down, hands out in front. Not bad. She's qualified. <laughs> She's shocked. <laughs> Don't do that again. Nice play nonetheless. Simon again with the 2 2. Slice toward left field. Cespedes is on the move. He'll get there. Yoannis cuts it off in the gap. Ball looked like it might be headed all the way to the wall. Two things going in favor of Simon right there. That ball was slicing back to the left, and Cespedes read it great. Had a great route to it. Got a great jump. And the combination of it slicing back towards him and him getting a good jump prevented an extra base hit right there. One away for Dustin Ackley. Ackley flying to left field as well. That was back in the second. Only two hits allowed by Simon. Showing bunt. He takes the ball high and away. Ever since coming out of the University of North Carolina, Ackley, who was a much decorated hitter at North Carolina, was expected to put up. I think bigger numbers than he has at the major league level. Hitting only 206 coming in. He's only a career 245 hitter in the major leagues. I guess when you're hitting 206, you might take a shot at a bunch when a guy's playing way back. No doubt. You gotta try to get something going. Now again, Simon behind 2 0. Ackley does have a little bit of power. Last year he hit 14 home runs. Another reason why Alfredo Simon needs to get ahead in the count more often is pitch counts climbing up there. Already closing on 70 pitches and they're only in the fourth inning. One out. Two and one on Ackley. We live in a 100 pitch count or thereabouts world before you activate the bullpen. Jeff Jones hoping to get more consistency in the second half from Simon. It's a bouncer to first. That is a foul ball. Don't oh mind doing a nice job of trying to get to that ball while it's still fair. That was a heads-up play, but it already was fouled by the time he touched it. Kerwin Danley on top of it. You can see him charge the ball and trying to catch that ball in fair territory. Romine at first tonight. Avila caught, or I should say, uh, played at first base the last two. Two and two on Dustin Ackley. Tigers on the strength of three homers have a three nothing lead. Ackley skies this one to left center field. Ghost on the move, still going back. Anthony at the wall. It's off his glove. Oh, and Ghost runs into the wall. They will try and score a run, and they will. The third base goes Ackley, and it's three to one. Ghost ran a mile and a half for that ball, and very nearly caught it. You well, know, he ran in, into that wall hard, and he knew he was going to hit it. And that might have subconsciously made him pop that ball out. Look at how hard he hit that wall. Fearless, just going off the edge of his glove and then crashing into the wall. That was enough for Ackley to oh. get all the way to third base. Thank God for padding. But look at the head snap there. 
Let's listen to the sound live. That was one heck of an impact. So Seattle gets on the board. Ackley with a triple and an RBI, his first triple of the year. And here is Brad Miller. And that leadoff walk comes back around, finally does haunt Alfredo Simon. Drill to center field, goes on the move again. This one is over his head. That'll score another run. Miller is on his way to second. He'll pull in with a double, and just like that, it's three to two. Back to back extra base hits for Seattle. And that'll bring out Jeff Jones. Let's look at the pitch fastball right down Broadway, down in the zone, but split the heart of the plate. Anthony Ghost was shaded in a little bit there, and it's tough to, for him to read that ball on a line drive. You don't know how far it's going to carry by the time he was really able to get on his horse. That ball had already carried over his head. You can see he reacted to do it well, but knew he wasn't going to get to it and just waited for it to come down. So on consecutive plays, the balls hit over the head of Anthony Ghost. Now here's Mike Zanino with a chance to tie this ball game. Still only one out, and even that ball was hard hit. Zanino rolls it foul, 0-1. Mariner showing some life offensively. Two runs on four hits now for Seattle. Zanino had a hit taken away in a nice play by Iglesias in the second. Runner goes to third. And no chance for Avila. I was just going to say. That Alfredo Simon needs to pause or take a second look at that runner. They're priming him, and no more than I think it that Brad Miller read my mind. He was totally off on the first move. Simon never looked at him twice. You can see the jump. Alex got no chance. Even if that ball's a strike, he's got no chance of throwing out the runner. And Avila was fortunate to even stop that ball. Eighth stolen base of the year for Miller. Now a fly ball. Normal outfield will score the tying run. Infield coming in. Zanino fouls it back out of play. So a we'll walk, a double, a triple, and a stolen base in this inning for Seattle. Alfredo Simon has got one out, runner at third base. Now he has the choice of winding up or staying in the stretch. He's got a Keep an eye on Miller at third base if he's going to wind up. All you have to do is make sure he stops. You don't want him to take that walking lead, but he chooses to pitch out of the stretch. Red foul. And quite honestly, in Simon's case, out of the stretch right here in this situation might not be a bad idea because it's forcing him to stay back a little longer. Again, I talked to Jeff Jones, and he was saying one of the reasons he was falling behind so many guys is he was rushing with his lower half and kind of flying open. And uh, he wanted him to have a, a little longer hip turn to stay over the rubber longer. And that'll square him up more towards the catcher. You can see him flying open right there, flying off the mound. And the count goes two and two. Avila had to leave the crouch to stop that one. A 23 pitch fourth here for Alfredo. He's up to 75 now. Tying run at third with one out. Oh man, Avila with another backhanded stop. That's the second one he's had to dig out of the dirt with a backhand. And those aren't split fingers, I don't think. I think those are just fastballs. He's just overthrowing them. Ball was the old fashioned worm killer there. That was four feet in front of home plate. He has made two of those. 
Well, it's gone three and two on Zanino, the number nine hitter who came in batting 162. Good time for Alex just to walk out there and talk to Alfredo Simon. I know it's easier said than done. I've been in this situation many, many times, and really for me, it's about focus. It's somehow getting your pitcher to come back and remember to finish off, do all the little things subconsciously to throw the ball. Let's take a look at our high speed pitch brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity. You can see he's touched 96 on his fastball change up at 77. Swing and a miss, and Zanino goes down on strikes. Two away. Big out right there. Huge out. Ooh, we needed that one. That is the fourth strikeout for Alfredo. So here is Austin Jackson. The infield is back now with two outs. Jackson had a base on balls and a steal back in the third. Now with two outs, he's going to wind up. Now what can be the reasoning for that? Well, maybe it's just uh, making sure that Miller doesn't get that good jump. In case there's a safety squeeze or suicide squeeze, you want him to have to run as far as possible, and you can hold him closer to the bag from the stretch than you can from the windup. Grounded foul. Now quickly 0 2. For me, though, as a right handed pitcher, what you do is you keep your pivot foot on the rubber and your landing foot being your left foot as far as a right handed pitcher, just slightly on the rubber or behind the rubber. And all you have to do is step off with your right foot and that'll freeze the runner. So you can always peek over there and you see him taking a walking lead. You just step off with your right foot. Jackson fights it off, stays alive. So Simon was uh, in trouble and has been each and every inning in this game. They finally get to him. An RBI triple by Ackley, RBI double by Miller. Working ahead in the count here, though, with Austin Jackson out of the windup. We'll see if he throws a split finger here. That's been his go to pitch when he's ahead in the count. Sharply, but right at Kinsler, and that will end the inning. However, Seattle gets two back. We go to the fifth. Uh, see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. So get your cameras out and uh, send in your uh, Detroit fan photo. Well, Simon gave up a couple of runs. Could have been worse, though. They left the tying run at third. 
And now the Tigers lead is back to one as Iwakuma goes to the hill. It'll be Romine Iglesias and Kinsler for Detroit in the fifth. And Romine showing butt looks at a strike. Andrew Tapp to the mound his first time up. Another good example if you watched Iwakuma there. He reacts so well. He sees him square around, but he's in such a good fielding position that he charges the ball in that first pitch and was ready to anticipate a bunt. And you can only do that if you square up and are in a great fielding position, a finishing position as a pitcher. Well, it's helped him out a couple of times tonight. The Tigers have hit three balls back to him. One of them was scorched. Yukuma ready with the one two. Two balls, two strikes on Roman. 56 pitches for Yukuma. He has not really shown some of the velocity that he has had in the past, and I think that's natural. When you look at the injury that he had, a strained left. That's the big muscle on your right side, your left side. In this case, he's a right-handed pitcher. Uh, Romine couldn't hold up. One gone in the fifth. Well, this July, baseball's best players gather in Cincinnati for the Midsummer Classic with home field advantage for the World Series on the line. Our coverage of the 2015 Major League Baseball All-Star Game begins July 14th, 7 p.m. Eastern on Fox. And streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Here's one of the All Stars that will be in Cincinnati. Jose Iglesias. In there, strike one. One of the things that Iwakuma will not do typically is beat himself with walks. No. Only 21 walks all of last year. Throws another strike going to for me part of the reason for that is not you know he's got tremendous focus but he's got great body control when you see a guy finish the way he finishes not a lot of excessive energy wasted he's a base hit one out single for Iglesias he does work at a very rapid pace he uh, pumps the strike zone and has had a lot of success here doing so here is Ian Kinsler. Tigers trying to rebuild their lead. Ian, couple of fly balls, both of them to left field. One inside. Getting back to Iwakuma though in his injury, we haven't seen him touch the low 90s, which he's been capable in the past of throwing. And he's the kind of guy that will run that fastball up when he has situations, see a chase. He did that with Victor in one of the pitches earlier. And a low 90 fastball from him sometimes looks like a 95-98 mile hour fastball. Pull the third. Nice play by Seeger. The second one. Powers relay. A double play. A rocket that Seeger turns into two. Just like that, inning over. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire.
fourth inning, the last hitter, Austin Jackson. The sequence that Alfredo Simon throws, the last pitch right there. Alex Avila throws a fastball down and in. It looked to me like Simon wanted to shake him off, but he didn't give him an option. He never showed another sign. Simon ends up throwing the pitch and gets the ball to Kinsler for the out. Well, Vila being a little bullheaded there, and it worked out. Maybe he got tired of blocking balls in the dirt. <laughs> Good point. He had to block a couple of them with a guy at third base. 3 2 is our score. The Tigers still have the lead. And Simon going back to work. Kyle Seeger leading it off. Seeger, Cano, and Cruz, 2 3 and 4 in the Seattle lineup. 83 pitches. This is where Simon's got to be a little more efficient now. He can't get deep into counts. Go ahead and challenge the guy. You got a one run lead. Still got a run to work with. Try to get early outs. And he is a desperate need now of a 1 2 3 inning. Here's the 0 2. He has really been throwing a lot of change ups tonight and struggling with his command. For the viewers watching, when Alex wiggles his fingers, that's the change up. And this is the split finger usually. Driven to right field, but it's going to be straight at JD Martinez. Got away with one there. That ball was left up in the zone, but Seeger out in front a little bit, hit it off the end of the bat. Seems like Alfredo's gotten away with a couple of pitches tonight. Well, you need to get away with some. I mean, that's part of the game. You make mistakes, and really, for me, it's really about what separates an average hitter from a great hitter is the ability for them never to miss the mistakes. The good ones seem to drive those mistakes. The other ones make outs on those. They get themselves out. Here is Robinson Cano. Unable to drive in a run from third base with one out in the third. Cano tonight is one for two. No time called by Cano. Six straight seasons of hitting 300 or better, but this year he came in at 248 here tonight. Much Drilled to the gap in right center. That's going to get down. Base hit. Goes over to cut it off, and Cano is two for three. Let's come back and take a look at this swing for Cano. It's another changeup, and it's got a great location. The ball's down and away, just where you want to throw a changeup. But Cano has seen enough of them, and he's sitting on it and puts on a really good swing right there, getting a base hit. Well, Nelson Cruz has been quiet tonight. Simon has been able to strike him out twice. Cruz at 302 has knocked in 50 runs this year. You know, when you look at the evolution of uh, Nelson Cruz, you say, well, he played for a long time in Texas, hitter's ballpark, played in Baltimore last year, hitter's ballpark, and you figure his numbers had a lot to do with that, but here he is in Seattle, pitcher's ballpark, and the numbers are equally as good. Well, when he hits him, you know, there's no ballpark that's going to fence him in. He can drive the ball a long way, and his power is usually to left field. He really hits him. Deep right down the line, maybe towards the pop of the alley in left center, but basically right at the left fielder. And he likes the ball middle half down. He, he's more of a low ball hitter than a high ball hitter. You can tie him up, up and in, but you got to make sure it's off the plate in. He got him to pop this one up. Shallow center field goes coming in. Cruz now is 0 for 3. No, that was a very good location on that fastball by Alfredo Simon. You saw that Alex Avila was sitting up away, fastball outside, and it was up belt high, but at least it got off the end of the bat. You know, he hit his spot. Had that ball drifted over the heart of the plate, he would have had a lot different result. Seth Smith now with two outs. It was his walk that got things started back in the fourth. He eventually scored on the triple by Ackley. 
Simon's got to do a better job. Cano might try to steal here. Ground ball, base hit, left field. And somebody better get over the third to come. Iglesias finally does. Iglesias kind of read that. He knew that Castellanos was going to his left and that he was the guy to get over. Alfredo Simon started drifting that way, and Iglesias basically called him off and said, I've got this, I've got this. But sharply hit ball to the left side, only one defender over there. So two on now with two outs. Bring him Logan Morrison. Hit one sharply to left field as Cespedes back in the fourth. Morrison has a little bit of pop, 10 home runs this year. Cano and Smith aboard. He's a big boy. Big, strong, country strong. Morrison looks at ball one. Here's what we're talking about a little bit uh, earlier this season with men in scoring position, a shade over 200 today. They are one for eight. Kind of tells the story of the 2015 Mariners right there. They have had many, many opportunities to tie games, win games, and just can't get that tying or go ahead run in and leave them stranded out there in scoring position. Two and oh on Logan Morrison. As far as the M's are concerned, a lot of folks pick them to win the American League West Division. However, nobody, and I mean nobody, picked Houston, I don't think. And if you say you did, I'm not sure I believe you. Go to Vegas. <laughs> That's right. If you're that good. 49 and 36. There's the new Mariners hitting coach. Edgar. Edgar Martinez, one of the game's best designated hitters of all time. Here's the 2-0. Two and one on Morris. He has uh, replaced my former teammate Howard Johnson. Ojo uh, going back to Tacoma, I think. Minor leagues. Hey, girl, Hall of Famer. Well, if they start considering a little bit more what designated hitters bring to the table, yes, no question. But the fact that they haven't put a strictly designated hitter in the hall yet, I guess, is what's preventing him. All I can tell you is that he was one of the game's best hitters. I had to face him and he could hit. Here's the 2 1. Grounded foul, 2 and 2. I agree. I, I think that, uh, you know, DH is a spot in baseball. It is a position in the lineup, therefore, he should be eligible. And here's some of the superlatives of it. Over 2,200 hits. 312 career batting average. The third baseman before he took over full time as a DH. Got his own restaurant. Yeah, how about that? It's out in left field. So that's living, man. You're the hitting coach for the Mariners, and you got your own restaurant. Yeah, but his team's not hitting real well. <laughs> well, he's just got here. He's he's the oh, Mr. Fix It guy. Believe me, he's got a challenge on his hands. <laughs> Three and two, the count. Oh, if it was just that easy. Right? I know it, no doubt. And all these new GMs would just pick a guy out of the stands and say, you know what, I, I read the numbers on you are great. Go out there and show him how to hit. Well, you know he's good because, because he has a street named after himself outside of the ballpark. <laughs> Edgar Martinez Drive. Wait a minute, you don't have to be good. They named a street down in Fort Myers after me. It's right at the ballpark. That's, Is that right? You don't have to be good to get a street named after well, you. Well, that's true then, apparently. <laughs> I got to tell you, he's handing about them out that. to anybody now, huh? So apparently they did this down in Lakeland or down in uh, Fort, Fort Myers uh, at the Hammond Complex. And Danny Gladden, my longtime friend, teammate in '91 and radio voice of the Twins, found out about this, and he was totally annoying because there's no Gladden Street. So I said, Danny, I really had nothing to do with this. I want you to know I did not go out there and campaign for this at all. Did you pay somebody? No. Runner goes on 3 2, driven high in the air. Center field. Back goes Ghost. Track, wall, leaps, can't get it. It's gone. A home run.
Logan Morrison hits his 11th. Well, we talked about the strength of Logan Morrison, and he got a pitch that he could handle up in the zone. Again, Alfredo Simon's been flirting with disaster all night long with those high pitches up in the zone. And Morrison just crushed that ball. Yeah, disaster has struck. Well, would you say he was country strong? He hit it a country mile. Yeah. And it's now five to three in favor of Seattle, their first lead of the night. Simon is stung for a three spot here. Ouch. To center field to give the Mariners the lead. Here is Zach Lee. And he takes the ball low 2 0. Dustin Ackley tripled in a run in the fourth. Again, the 2 0 pitch from Simon as he falls behind another hitter. That's 2 and 1 now. And you can just see the difference when Simon was pitching well early. He was not. Throwing too many balls out over the heart of the plate. Now he falls behind. And he has to come in, and a lot of those balls are up in the zone, middle half, kind of center cut in the plate. Popped him up. He's going to take it. Foul ground. Roman coming over. Andrew hauls it in to retire the side, but a big inning. Three run shot for Logan Morrison. All of a sudden, Seattle has the lead. Lead the Tigers have three solo homers in this game Castellanos, Victor, and JD Martinez. But in the fifth inning, a three run shot by Logan Morrison gives Seattle their first lead. And now the Tigers have some work to do on a spectacular night here in Seattle this evening. Tigers get four more chances here. There's plenty of time. Trailing by two currently. And they've got the heart of the lineup coming up Cespedes, Martinez, Martinez. Facing Hisashi Iwakuma. First one is in there for a strike, 0 1. Cespit is sold for two, strikeout, ground out. Okay. 290 batting average, he's knocked in 44. Bouncing in, one ball, one strike. Tigers got one in the second, added two more in the fourth, and we're Ahead would appear to be comfortably 3-0 early in this game, but the Seattle offense came back and now it's up to Iwakuma. Well, it's an important at bat for Iwakuma. Drill to center field. That ball's in it's time. See you back. later. <laughs> Way out of here. The ball is flying out of this ballpark tonight. That is the fourth home run of the night for the Tigers. That was a line drive right there. 
That ball got out of here in a hurry and. I was just about to say it's a big at bat for Iwakuma. You want to shut down inning when you get a lead and the Tigers jump right back into this. Cespedes has owned Iwakuma and that was crushed. So much for this being a pitcher's ballpark. Yeah, what's up with like that it. anyway? It's hot here. When it heats up, it doesn't matter where it is. The ball flies. One home run tonight for Seattle and four of them for the Tigers. And all of a sudden now the Tigers back down by one. And here is Victor Martinez. Victor hit a long one back in the fourth inning into the seats in right. It was his third of the year. Each team with seven hits. Breaking ball drops in. Maybe the tie games, a game like this, tie game, it goes to the team with the total distance. Um, yeah, total distance. Well, I mean, that's a stat they haven't come up with yet is total distance yeah. on homers? Uh, no, on all the at bats, all the hits. You take a, okay. the hits from both sides and you just. Figure out how far they went. That one, you know, that, that's a 128 footer right there. But it's a knock. And Victor fell behind 0 2, and now he's aboard. That's a tying run. There is some activity now. A right hander, Guaype, warming up. Michael Guaype. Here's JD Martinez. How about the best 24 game home run stretches in Tigers history? Look at this. Martinez and Hank Greenberg that, each with 15. You know, that really puts it in perspective. It's, uh, it's a ball, kind of a small sample size, only 24 games, but over the course of 24 games, JD has been among the elite in Tiger history. You see it another one here tonight. Nope. And then Iwakuma now. That's it. Getting a visit to the mound. He's coming out of this game. How about that? Well, well they gave him a lead, but he served up a homer. Yeah, it's his first start from coming back from the DL, so they've seen enough. Wall side windows pitching change. We'll be back. Get the lowest tire price period. Bell Tire by Myers. Say big with M Perks from Myers. Sign up at mperks.com and by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Safe Cofield, the site tonight in Seattle. Tigers and Mariners involved in a back and forth affair right now. Seattle has a tenuous one run lead as Michael Guaype takes over for Seattle. And there's the numbers for Michael. This year, big, strong-looking right-hander. 
I haven't seen him pitch, so it's always fun for me to see new guys. JD Martinez will be the first man to face him, and he drills that one back up the middle into center field. <laughs> Stay hot, JD. No kidding, man. Two more hits tonight for Martinez. Seven game hitting streak for the new All Star. And a good inning here for the Tigers. Three straight hits. Two on now for Alex Avila. Iwakuma goes five plus two banners in this game. He is responsible for Victor Martinez at second base. Nobody out. We're in the top of the sixth. Avila, 0 for 2. Ball one. You talk about Iwakuma and his command. He did not walk a, a Tiger hitter at all today. Struck out three. He will not get the loss. He will not be his runner at first base. So. The worst he can do is a no decision if the Tigers can somehow get the lead again. That'll miss inside. The count goes 2 and 0. Oh. Guaype was called up on July the 4th from AAA. It's his second stint with the ball club. It's his first opportunity this year to pitch in the major leagues. Guaype is 24 years old, native of. Venezuela. And he missed again. He's gone 3 and 0. Oh. You got another left-hander now in the Mariner bullpen, David Rollins, up and throwing. You don't win a lot of friends, especially pitching coaches coming out of the pen and giving up a hit and then three straight balls. And Avila is going to take a four pitch walk, which will load the bases. With nobody out. It's going to bring Rick Waits out now, the pitching coach. He's going to call time and try and get Mr. Guaype settled around or settled down here because this is becoming a, a very unenviable task here with the run in. Now the base is loaded. Nick Castellanos, who already has two hits tonight, has hit safely in 11 of 12. One thing Nick needs to do at this at bat is make sure he gets a pitch he can handle. You saw the guy come in, he threw one pitch to JD Martinez, a high fastball that JB, JD just turned right around to center field, and then he throws four straight balls to Alex. So you got to make sure the guy throws a strike. This is where you can really keyhole a pitch. And look for it, and if it's not there, just take it. Because you want to give him a chance to implode if he can. And uh, if he's going to be wild, it puts you in the driver's seat. Ball one, he hadn't thrown a strike yet. And Brad may just tell Dave Clark over at third base, let's take a strike. Well, it takes the bat out of the hitter's hand, especially with bases loaded and nobody out, but. Heck, if you can get a free pass, bring home a run via the walk, why not? Right back up the middle of the center field, the base hit. Victor scores. JD right behind him, he will score. And the Tigers are right back in front. Third hit of the ball game for Castellanos. Well, he got something he liked, and he drove it right up the middle. That's just excellent hitting right there. Good base running also by J.D. Martinez. He read the ball to his left and was off at the crack of the bat, not allowing Austin Jackson an opportunity to even throw up the home plate. The Tigers get right back and with the lead. Well, Guaype's stay is a very short one. It's another wall side windows pitching change. Guaype will depart. Tigers have a lead. And we'll be back.
can only see on Fox Sports 1 beginning at 4 Eastern. Then at 7 p.m. Eastern, it's Baseball Night in America as the Yankees take on the Red Sox on your local Fox station. It's all this week on your home for baseball every Saturday, Fox and Fox Sports 1. David Rollins now is the new left-hander coming in for Seattle. They have not got an out here in the top of the sixth inning against Detroit. Rollins is coming in in another tight situation. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Infield is playing about halfway. In on the corners. Double to play depth up the middle. Tigers answer the Seattle three with three of their own here in the sixth. They go up by a run 6-5. And looking for more. Looking for a bunt here. One and foul over to one. Brad Osmus again asking Anthony Ghost to just get a ball down. This is where he wants to advance the runners. Try to get Castellanos over to second base and Avila to third. So you got two runners in scoring position with only one out. Willing to give up an out here to put runners in scoring position. And the bunt has popped up. And it's going to be short hop. It's going to fall in. Nobody is going to be gotten here. The bases are loaded. Well, Ghost just caught a break right there. That ball stayed up, and it looked like Seeger was going to be able to pounce on it and catch the ball. And yet the ball was able to drop underneath his glove. Once it dropped, there was no way they were going to get Ghost. So let's take another look at it. You see the ball popped up. Seeger trying to catch it. But he takes his eyes off it just momentarily. And that's all it takes. Sometimes the ball drops and Ghost is safe. Everybody's safe. And it's ruled a base hit. So that's going to load the bases. Still nobody out. The first six Tigers have reached here as Roman steps in. That'll be the 11th hit now for the Tigers. Roman is 0 for 2. And there is ball one. Big break there for the Tigers because the bunt by Ghost looked like it would be caught on the fly. And Castellanos, the runner from first to second, had to hold up and he just got into second base. Here's the 1 0. Lifted back out of play. 1 1 on Romine. I know this is coming from a former pitcher. But I don't know how in the world that can be ruled a hit. The ball's bunted 35 feet in the air. Third baseman runs by it. He actually touched it with his glove, and it's not an error. It's a hit. What? Because he has to make extraordinary effort to get to the ball. Well, I mean, maybe it was a bang bang play. Maybe they figured that he was going to be safe anyway. That's my only. Only understanding of the official score. Yeah, on that. I'm thinking because it was bunted and the and the and the fielder was charging that ball. And if he fields it cleanly, he's still going to have to make a pretty good play. Yeah, still going to have to make. That's probably why. And that uh, third baseman was Seeger, who wasn't in close enough to to catch that ball on the fly. That is nice to right field. That's a base hit. One run scores. They will move the chain up 90 feet, and that's it. So Avila comes in to score, and the Tigers put on a show here at seven to five, and that's seven straight that have reached. Yeah, no outs. Everybody contributing here in the sixth inning. Romine doing a good job. He's shooting that ball out to right field. Castellanos had an intention of maybe going home. Dave Clark had to literally stand in front of him and put the brakes on him. So Roman gets his seventh RBI. That'll bring up Iglesias now. The Tigers have 12 hits. Swing and a miss. So and one on Jose. This has the makings of a gargantuan inning when you consider the Tigers have scored four. They have the bases loaded, nobody out. And everybody is hitting in this inning. And this is where the pressure is really on the pitcher to throw the ball. Where he wants to replace you from out of the zone in that first pitch. And he's going to have to hustle, and he does. To get another run in. Preventing the double play there. So Iglesias gets an RBI. That is the first out of the inning. It's 8 5. Castellanos comes in to score.
what an answer for the Tigers a five run sixth inning. And if you're Alfredo Simon sitting on the bench right here you know your pitch counts up you've got to be ready to take on the seventh inning try to have a quick one two three inning get the team right back in the dugout take the momentum away from them. Those are all things that has to be going through your mind if your team comes back after you give up the lead and uh, recreates the lead for you with four runs scored already. Simon surrendered the lead on the two out three run shot by Logan Morrison. The lead did not last very long. Five runs scored. Way outside. Kinsler tonight is 0 for 3. Double play ball this last time up, although it was hit extremely hard. The 1 0. Kinsler fouls it back out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, the Tigers now have gone seven consecutive games with at least 10 hits. Yeah, they're doing their part. The win and loss record during that stretch, not exactly great. Very good opportunity to win this game now, with a big lead. One and two. Closes the book on both Iwakuma Kuma and Uepe. Eight earned runs. Three for Wepe and five for Iwakuma. Iwakuma surrendering four homers in this game. All of them solos. And this is a Seattle team that was running the strength of their pitching for the most part this year. And a lot of that, of course, has to do with Felix Hernandez. There's a ground ball short. There's one. And there's two. Ooh, the second double play bounced into tonight by Kinsler. However, Tigers score five big ones. And they regain the lead for Simon. Here in Seattle, and uh, here's the upcoming matchup presented by the Michigan Office of Highway Safety Planning. Kyle Ryan will get it going tomorrow night, game two in the series. Taiwan Walker, who is a former number one pick, he will go for Seattle in game two in the series. A couple of baseball young guys can tow it up tomorrow. A lot to be decided here tonight, though, as Mr. Simon goes back to the hill. Brad Miller starts it off for Seattle, and he looks at ball one. We talked about it with Iwakuma in the top half of the sixth inning. Now here in the bottom, Q 
can Simon just keep the momentum get that first hitter and have a very efficient inning. Yeah, 102 right now. Simon needed 109 to get through five and two thirds in his last start. He allowed 15 hits in that game. Activity now in the Tiger bullpen. Missing ball to second base. Easy play for Kinsler. One up, one away. Hardy the lefty and Wilson the righty. This game's a lot about momentum. Your team comes and scores you a bunch of runs after you give up the lead. You want to shut down inning. Get your team back in the dugout and take that momentum away. Here is Mike Zanino. Oh, for two out of the nine spot in their lineup. Simon getting close to the end there. You see the pitch count at 103. So this may be his last hitter. He might. Get another shot at Jackson if you can get a quick out. Simon to the first three innings saw a lot of uh, a lot of batters had a few base runners but pitched around a lot of trouble. And then he gave up two in the fourth and the two out three run shot in the fifth. But his offense has picked him up tonight. One ball, one strike on Zanino. Only Salvador Perez has caught more innings this year than Zanino. Swing and a miss. One and two. Zodino hit for power last year, 22 home runs, but his final batting average was 199. And Simon will try and finish him off. Popped him up. That'll work too. Who wants it? Avila. Avila no, doesn't Simon. see it. Man, Alex never saw it. Simon bailed him out. Well, here's another point I want to bring up. Okay. Okay. Who takes the most fly balls during batting practice? Pitchers, right? They're out there shagging oh, every okay. day. All right. Running around the outfield, and yet when a ball's hitting the infield, it's just totally taboo. Get out of the way. You're not humanly possible able to catch a fly ball. Well, you see, Alex doesn't see the ball. Simon says, I got it. Calm down, boys. Yeah, it's no big deal. I'm no with you deal. on that. I, I never understood that either. But infielders, you know, they want the pitcher. Get the heck out of the way. This is our infield. Uh, did you ever refuse to get out of the way and catch one? No, anyway? no, I got the heck out of the way. <laughs> I, I mean, if they wanted the ball that bad, what the heck? But th you got to understand, my mentality now is, if you're going to take them, take them all. Don't miss any. There's <laughs> <laughs> a base hit to center field for Jackson. A two-out single for the Mariners here in the sixth. I never got it either, Jack. I don't know. I mean, the guy's out there with the glove. He's a professional baseball player. Should be able to catch Papa. That'll do it now. Well, Brad, Brad out there already. Brad trying to get six, but he's going to get five and two thirds out of Simon. And with Seeger coming up, they'll bring the lefty Hardy in. And Alfredo will give up the baseball, having allowed five runs on eight hits. And he'll turn things over to the bullpen. We'll step aside and be back to Seattle. <laughs>
lead in this ball game. Two outs in the sixth inning. He'll turn things over to the bullpen. And that member of the bullpen is Blaine Hardy. That well, was a battle for Alfredo Simon tonight. Five plus innings, allowing five runs. But some of those days are going to be like that. And Tigers did a great job of giving him some run support. Now it'll be up to Blaine Hardy to see if he can hold that. And he can get a hold, you know. No, <laughs> oh, there's we're, another we're, one of your favorite we're, stats. Relievers can get a hold. <laughs> Seeger is the batter. Is the hold right up there with the quality start for you? Well, I think it's actually better. Quality start means your ERA is almost five. Lefty lefty matchup here. I understand the hold. And quite honestly, all, all kidding aside, I think it's an important stat for certain guys because they have nothing else to get. They're not gonna Correct. be in position to win a game. So Save let's game. give them something that's of credibility and a hold means that they came in and did their job. So I, I don't think it's a bad stat. Seeger waits on the 0 1. Well, Kyle Seeger so far this year batting 284 against left handed pitch. So lefties don't seem to bother him. He is 0 for 2 with a walk in this game. Tigers lead at 8 5. Now the 1 1. Right off the mask of Avila. Seeger's another one of the younger Mariner players, and he's been here a few years now, but they think highly of. They signed him to a, a long term deal, figuring that he would be a big part of the future here in Seattle. Long term, to be sure, a seven year contract that they signed him to in December. Took over as the everyday third baseman back in 2012. Behind in the count here, one and two. Swing and a miss. Hardy comes out of the bullpen to strike him out. Inning over. Let's go to the seventh in Seattle. Cespedes a home run. Castellanos gets a base hit that scores J.D. Martinez. Romine another base hit that scores Alex Avila. And then uh, I think that was Iglesias hits into a fielder's choice scores Castillo. Five runs scored. Castellanos I mean five runs scored by the Tigers and that puts him in front eight to five. Yeah, and we go to the seventh inning here in Seattle. The uh, Tigers trying to hold on to this advantage, and at this point, right now, trying to add on as Cespedes will stand in. And then Yoenis hit a rocket of a home run to get things started back in the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. 
Cespedes now has six career home runs in this ballpark. Well, you can see why Brad Osmus has been quietly trying to campaign for him for an All Star bid. He's got some great numbers, having a very, very good year. Way up there in doubles for his career this year. And uh, has moved him up in the batting order because of it. He he feels that Cespedes is one of the better hitters, that he's got very good base running instincts. He wants him to get more at bats, and he moves him up to the two hole because of it. Bouncer back up the middle. Cano not going to be able to handle it. If he fields that ball cleanly, it's still going to be a tough play, but he just never came up with it. It'll be a base hit. Well, you can see Cano does a few things a little unorthodox. He's always throwing the ball kind of down in his glove. He never throws it over the top, so he's going to just do. I mean, I've seen Robinson Cano catch these kind of balls and just flip it from his waist, and that's what he was trying to anticipate that he was going to flip it across his body. But I agree with you, Mario. That was going to be a bang bang play. Ends up being a base hit for Ioannis. Got to play that nonchalantly. Yes, he did. And now here is Victor Martinez batting from the right side. There's a strike call. Martinez homer to the fourth. He singled in the sixth. Seven straight base runners reached either by hit or a walk to start that sixth inning. He'll get back out of play on two. Take a look at some of the numbers pre and post of the disabled list for Victor. And you can see that he's really come on here after coming off the DL. Batting average way up there. He's already got six doubles and 12 RBI. One ball, two strikes. Thirteen Detroit hits in this game tonight. Trying to get back to two over the 500 mark with a victory here in Seattle. Here's the one two. Out of play. Minnesota was a winner tonight. Brian Dozier hit a home run in the 10th inning to make the Twins a winner. They're ahead of the Tigers in the standings. KC was postponed because of rain. The Twins will pick up a half a game. The Tigers, if they can hold on here, they'll pick up a half a game. They actually had tornado sirens going off in Kansas City. Here's the one two. Drill to center field. That's going to be another hit for Victor. First two of reach here in the seventh. Well, Saturday, July 18th, the Tigers play the Orioles at 7:08. Fans are invited to stay after the game for a fireworks spectacular. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Two on, nobody out for JD. And they need to add another hit. That you know, they've uh, apparently. The Tigers have so many hits tonight that they don't have a number big enough. <laughs> It's actually 14. There's a drive to right field. And that oh ball my. is going to be off the wall. Uh oh. JD, get back. Martinez with a long RBI single. Boy, JD with three more hits tonight. Well, that ball had, a, again, tremendous carry. Right fielder Seth Smith. Thought maybe that ball was going to be playable, and when it's all said and done, it goes off the wall in right field. This is some kind of role this young man is on. His third hit tonight. Two RBIs for JD Martinez, 9 5 ball game. Here's the Vila. Swing and a miss. JD Martinez had second base on his mind there too. He was headed towards second, but forgot that Victor was in front of him. Victor wasn't able to get the third, so he had to put on the brakes and go back to first. Yeah, under normal circumstances, you aren't thinking double. But Martinez just cannot run all that quickly. 
15 Detroit hits. A little bit outside. They have found a 15 to put in the scoreboard out there, so everything's all good. <laughs> Apparently, it was not a number that was too high. There you go. Another terrific night for the Tigers offense. Wonder how how big a numbers they have to put up. Never have been to Fenway or this ballpark where they put the old fashioned numbers up. I, I don't know how big the highest number is. Good question. It's got to be in the 20s anyway. I would think. think so, yeah. Well, no doubt in the 20s. Bible warming up in their bullpen now, so they've not been able to pull anybody out of their pen to get anybody out. Avila waiting on a 1 2. Two and two on Alex. Well, pitcher David Rollins came in in the top half of the sixth inning. He did get retire all three outs for the Mariners, but he gave up two hits. Fielder's choice and then got Ian Kinsler to ground into a 6 4 3 double play. Rollins, a rule of five pick from Houston. Way outside, three and two. Rollins managed Major League debut on the 4th of July at Oakland was just called up. It was in double A last year in the Houston system. To the count. Right before the Tigers got here to Seattle, the M's uh, shook up their bullpen a little bit. Tom Wilhelmson was sent down. Castellanos sweating on deck. Green two. Drill to left field on a line. Base hit. The bases are loaded for straight hits for the Tigers who just won't stop hitting here in the seventh inning. And now 16 Tigers hits. Now the seventh innings starting off a lot like the sixth inning. First four guys reach base, no outs, four straight singles. And they're going to make another pitching change. Actually, that is, that Rick uh, that's Rick Waits. Yeah. I thought he signaled with his right hand. But he's probably scratching his head trying to figure out what to say to his staff out there. Tigers. This is where I don't want to be a pitcher. Yeah, what do you say? What do you say? I have no idea. Well, I mean, not that you were in many of these situations. Well, I'm not I was. Saying you that, you could be. Okay. Let's not well, sugarcoat it. When you were in these situations, what did Roger Craig say to you? Well, I had a couple of wonderful conversations with Roger. Uh, who was one of my greatest pitching coaches and uh, respect him to this day beyond words. But I told him a couple times, Roger, I know when you come out there, I stink. I mean, that's the only reason you ever come out is because you stink. I, I've, I've never seen you come out to say, hey, you're doing great. <laughs> so I already know I stink. So why don't we have this conversation in the dugout? And <laughs> one time he come out, he didn't say a word. And Lance looked at me and him and just scratching his head trying to figure out well, what was that all about? I said just get back there. Don't worry about it. I got the next couple guys out. Roger was just steaming. And I sat down. He comes over. And I said Roger that was the greatest pep talk ever. Oh I could see Craig doing that too. He knew how so to push my buttons. He came, and he came out and said about. nothing. Came out and said nothing because I told him Rod you never come out to say I'm doing well. You always come out when I stink. Well, I think those visits obviously are to, to kind of let the uh, catch your breath. Re, yeah, catch your breath, reset. Let's 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 get let's get it going. I remember Tram coming to the mound a few times. Sparky had sent Trammel out there because he was one of my buddies and he could make me laugh. One and two to count on Castellanos. And uh, Tram would come to the mound and just look at me, and I was fuming. 
couldn't get anybody out walking the house. And he looks at me and says, You haven't any fun yet? And of course, I just wanted to tackle him. That's all he took, huh? Yeah, he just made me laugh, and I kind of regrouped. Castellanos having a big night as well. He is homer to this game. He is driven in three, has three hits. And he'll shoot that one over the head of Cano. That'll get another run in. They'll each move up 90 feet, and the chain just keeps moving, and the Tigers continuing to pound the bullpen, and we'll get another pitching change here for Seattle. Well, you, you get kind of on a roll, and you catch a few breaks right there. The Tigers caught another break. Ball that basically looped over Cano's head because he's playing halfway. Doesn't even make the outfield grass, but it goes down as a hit in an RBI. Nick Castellanos with a four hit game. David Rollins was not the answer and back to the bullpen go the Seattle Mariners 10 5 is our score we will be back. The Tigers have the lead over Seattle. The offense man 17 hits, four home runs in this game. Castellanos is having a terrific game, a four hit game. And Logan Morrison, a three run homer, which briefly gave Seattle the lead, five to three, but that lead has long since been dissipated on a gorgeous night here in Seattle. Joe Bimel will take over now for the Mariners. And there are the numbers for Joe Bimel. Bimel now is going to face Anthony Ghost. Yeah, if you stayed up this late, uh, the guys in the studio can't wait to do the post game show, so I know they want you to hang around and watch them do their thing. We'll have a lot of great sound here in this one tonight. <laughs> guys at the studio, they're fired up about doing oh, a show like man, that. I hope they took a nap today. <laughs> Ghost is two out of three, a triple and a single. He's also knocked into a double play. Here's the 0 1. 0 and 2 on ghosts. The high water mark for the Tigers in hits in a game is 20 this year. 20. And they're closing in. They have 17. Now I got to tell you a little story here. This, this is the epitome of a crafty left hander, Joe Bimo. He, he apparently is into tats. And so what he does is he just tats his right arm. For the deception, he keeps his fair Caucasian skin the same color as his uniform to blend in with that baseball. Come on now, huh? That's pretty crafty. <laughs> I think you're stretching here. Well, I probably am, but what the heck? We've got a blowout game, and oh. I'm trying to create something. Oh, only you would pull that kind of analysis out of your back pocket, <laughs> or somewhere around that region. That's a crafty left hand. <laughs> the one two is fouled back out of play. I have never heard that kind of analysis before. Oh. 
I, I thought about, you know, if I ever got a tattoo, I'd put three baseballs on my right forearm <laughs> and, and have the stripes there so that they wouldn't know which one to swing at. And then, of course, they'd make me wear a sleeve. Well, of course. But that's a good idea, though. It's a really good idea. <laughs> I don't know. I thought you had I'm a, reaching, Mario. I thought you had a legit totally, story. I'm totally reaching here. I thought you talked to Bible before the game. You had it all set up. It goes you know, unable to hold I, up. If I talk to him tomorrow and he tells me that story, I'm going to use it again. All right. It I'm, worked on ghosts. <laughs> yes, it did. First out. That'll bring up Robine. Romine is one for three in this game, singled in a run in the sixth. 10 5 Detroit. They've out hit the Mariners 17 8. Bouncing ball left side, base hit. That'll get another run in. They're going to stop a Vila at third. And the Tigers just keep pouring it on. It's 11 to 5. Yeah, good for Romine. He doesn't get a chance to play all that often. Picks up his second hit of the game, his second RBI. Nice easy swing. Finds the hole on the left side. Thirteen hits in the last two innings for the Tigers. Twelve of them singles. There's a bigger number now. There's 18. Now they can't find enough for the runs. Here's Iglesias. Go back into the archives. I have one of our crack shot stats guys. Maybe Austin can do it for me and tell me in the next half inning the most hits I gave up in one game. Well, that should be easy to figure yeah, out. That, I think, yeah, that's got to be. Well, off the top of your head, what do you think? Well, it had to be somewhere close to where we're at right now, where well, the Tigers are at. I should well, say. Simon gave up 15 in his last start, and you don't very often see a guy stick around for 15 hits. I gave up 13 runs in one game. So <laughs> on how many hits? I don't know. That's what I got to figure out. Too many. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Two balls, one strike. On Iglesias, who picked up an RBI in the sixth inning. I remember Jack Billingham, right hand pitcher we had there in Detroit for a while. He uh, won a game, completed the game. I think he gave up 13 hits and he came in. He said, Now that's a crappy 13 hitter. <laughs> There's nothing like the old 13 hitter. Nothing like it. Bimel now with the 2 1 coming home. Ooh, he wanted that one, didn't get it. It's 3 and 1. Hard to believe at one point the Tigers trailed five to three in the middle of this game. They put up five in the six, three more here in the seven. Now the three one. High fly ball. Right field. This will be deep enough to score the run. RBI for Iglesias. And coming in is Avila from third base. Castiano tags up from second, goes to third, so he's in scoring position. You never know how many are going to be enough, so you've still got to play the game like it's a tie game. Well, here's a guy that deserves a hit tonight. I mean, Kinsler is hit into a couple of double plays. He's 0 for 4. He's hit the ball hard a couple of times tonight, but uh, when your team has 18, you've got an 0 for going. No, that's no fun. No, no fun at all. Everybody else is enjoying the party. Although I have to think, and of course I was never in this position, but I happen to think it's it's easier to take an over when your team scores 18 than 
to have a no hitter thrown against you and you're oh, part no of it. Yeah. I mean. No doubt. You end up winning you somehow. It's not all that bad. The sting isn't quite as bad. That's in the air to shallow right. Going to be caught on the run by Smith. Tigers bat around again. They're piling it on tonight. Seventh inning here in Seattle. We remind you to follow the Tigers all season long with MLB.com at bat. Number one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, and a whole lot more. Get it now for your smartphone or your tablet. So it'll be Robinson Cano to start things off here in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Cano, Cruz, and Smith facing Blaine Hardy. 18 hits on the board tonight for the Tigers. Ball one high to Cano. A couple of singles and a fly out. Two out of three for Robinson Cano. There's a strike called 1-1. One, one. Alfredo Simon tonight went five and two-thirds before departing, giving way to Hardy, who struck out Seeger. That into the sixth. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Ripped right at the second baseman. Look at that play by Kinsler. One out. That shows the kind of hands that Ian Kinsler has. He wasn't going to throw his body in it. 12-5 game, but he trusts his hands and reads this ball a little off to the side. Big league play right there. It was Nelson Cruz. He has not been a factor tonight. Cruz 0 for 3, couple of strikeouts. And twice early in this game, Cruz was at the plate with a chance to drive in a run or runs. Struck out with two men on in the first, struck out with the man in the third base in the third. So he stranded a few tonight. Cruz headed to the All-Star game, won the DH spot over Kendrys Morales, who was leading most of the way for the Royals. Well, the Royals fans were doing their part in trying to vote in as many Royals as possible. Down he goes. Hardy with a strikeout. Hardy doing a great job here. He's coming into a situation that's probably a little bit tougher to focus. It's a blowout type game, but you're a professional and your job. Is the same no matter what the game situation. Blaine Hardy just doing a great job here so far. Here is Smith with two outs. Single walk, two runs scored for Seth Smith. 
shift on against the left handed batter. Castellanos moving from third to short right. The 1 0. One ball, one strike. Kyle Ryan, Taiwan Walker tomorrow, and then it's Sanibal Sanchez and Jay Happ on Wednesday. They'll close it out with a day game here. That is out of Minnesota for a four game weekend set leading up to the All Star break. Tigers setting a good tone here so far in Seattle, really coming out swinging tonight. They got rid of Iwakuma early, he went five innings. Gave up five runs and it's been nothing but fun for their offense since then. The bullpen just has been pummeled here. The Mariner bullpen. Yeah, they also picked up Alfredo Simon tonight, who uh, obviously Jack was not at his best. He fell behind a lot early in this game and was uh, flirting with uh, some trouble most of the night. And then ended up giving up runs in the fourth and fifth and was trailing at 1.5 to 3. Two and two. Smith swings and misses, and Hardy has himself a one, two, three, seven. That's his third strikeout of the night. to read all of this Jack but suffice to say the Tigers have just been going off offensively tonight. Yeah as long as your last name doesn't start with Kinsler you've had a pretty good night and even he has had a good night defensively. Well Ian is 0 for 5 but uh, as we mentioned he's hit a couple of balls hard he's made some nice defensive plays and his team's leading that's the important thing 12 to 5. Cespedes will lead it off and he looks at strike one. Martinez and then Martinez to follow. Good night for you on a single homer. He's hit 11 home runs. On the season now. High towering fly ball to left field. This one is hit deep but it's not going to be deep enough right to the warning track. Jackson hauls it in. First out of the game. Hey, by the way, time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Detroit Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. 1 away here in the eighth. Now, Victor Martinez. Three hits for Martinez, two singles, home run as well. That's sprayed back out of play on one. Kind of gets lost in the shuffle in a game like this, but Victor 
certainly starting to really come on offensively. Well, I mean, it's typical victory. His average now is up to 260 with his three hits tonight. And it won't be long, at least it seems like this is the way Victor has operated. It won't be long before he gets that average, average rather, hovering around 300. That's what history says, and you got to believe a healthy Victor Martinez will repeat history. Now the 1 1. And that's in there, according to Country Joe, 1 and 2. Bimel's 1 2. Right back up the middle. How about a four hit game for Victor Martinez? That thing went whistling by yeah. Bimel. He's a professional hitter. You make a mistake over the middle or give him a cookie, and he's going to take advantage of it. He is as good as there is in the game of barreling up a ball. That ball, I promise you, is hit right in the right spot of a bat. And it Totally squared it up perfectly. So he has a four hit game. Castellanos is a four hit game. JD Hammers went foul back out of play. He is looking for a four hit game. Well, we're going to find out here, I think. Uh, they've got a 19 up on that board for hits. So we're going to find out if they have a 20. They've got a 20. They, they better have a 20. You've got it. The 0 1. Bouncing ball, third base side. Seeger will charge. He'll fire to second. That's all they will get. Two outs, runner at first base. That'll bring up Alex Avila. It is a Tigers team record at Safeco Field. 19 hits in this ballpark tonight. See, and we, we come to the park, and we had no idea that we we're going to see some of Tiger history here today. Right. You never know. That's why we keep coming. Work Safe. for free. Right? No. And no, we don't. Do you that. get paid? Yeah. I mean, no, no, yeah, we work for free. <laughs> yep, absolutely, Jack. Two outs and a strike call down Alex Avila. Some more activity now in the Tiger bullpen. Well, it's Ian Kroll who was just called up. Tigers have been going with one left hander, Blaine Hardy. Now they have two lefties with Kroll joining the pen. Avila back behind the dish tonight, catching after playing a couple of games at first base. Bimel ready with the 1-1. One, one. Like he went around and he did. James McCann has done terrific work for the Tigers this year. A swing and a miss to strike him out, and that'll end the inning. No runs, a hit, one man left to the bottom of the eighth. We go in the shadow of the Space Needle here in Seattle. All Tigers tonight.
the final vote candidates in the National League, Jack? What do you got here in this group? Well, Johnny Cueto and the Cincinnati Reds are teaming up with the Tigers to help get in Cueto and Joanna Cespedes. So that's what we recommend. And you look at some of the numbers there, Tulowitzki doing what he always does. Carlos Martinez, man, he's had a great year. Kershaw, of course, the big name in the Dodger organization, but Carlos Martinez, man, he has really had a good season so far. Surprising, no doubt. Ian Kroll has checked in out of the Detroit bullpen now. Good job by Blaine Hardy. Inning a third, three strikeouts, no hits. That's a hold. That's a hold indeed. And now Kroll will come on. And he will face Logan Morrison to get things started here. There's a ball outside to Morrison. Ian Kroll called up today. Drew Verhagen sent down. Third stint with the Tigers this year for Mr. Kroll. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Well, it gives Brad another left handed arm out of the pen. And Kroll has been very good at times. He can bring it up there in the low 90s. I think you'd probably get by with one lefty out of the bullpen for a little bit, but I think most skippers at least want two, don't they? Ideally, I think you want to be able to go righty, lefty, righty, mix and match. And it would certainly help if they were not similar styles of left handers. One guy was maybe more of a sidearm to three quarter, the other guy maybe over the top, one a power pitcher, the other guy maybe a finesse pitcher. But more and more bullpens are all about power pitchers. Wayne Hardy, along with tomorrow's starter. Kyle Ryan against Taiwan Walker tomorrow here. Still want to put a cowboy on, hat on Kyle Ryan. I think he looks a little like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> See if he could say something like, go ahead, punk. Something. Yeah, yeah. we can get that on tape. Yeah, I need yeah. to see that. Absolutely. Go ahead, punk. <laughs> two and two on Logan Morrison. Little bounce in and get away from Avila. Three balls, two strikes. It's going to be Morrison, Ackley, and Miller here, the bottom part of the lineup for Seattle facing Kroll. Simon started, Hardy came on, and now Kroll. What's going on here? Well, what you do in games that are like this, and you're a little bit bored starting pitcher David Pricey, you just disassemble a baseball. <laughs> sure, why not? And, and find out if the center is really a Super Bowl or not. That's popped up. Long run. With the shift on, Iglesias had to cover a lot of ground. Nicely done. One away. Time for a game break in Mickey York. No, actually, we're going down to Mick for post game, right, Mick? Hey, uh, that's right, Mario. Thank you very much. Lots of hits, lots of runs, lots of talk about coming up after the game on Tigers Live with our man Johnny Kane, Craig Monroe, and Rod Allen in the call. Sam Studio will pick our Martinez of the game, and uh, Nick Castellanos has had himself a whale of a night as well. We'll hear from him. All that and more coming up after the game on Tigers Live, guys. The uh, plural of Martinez is Martini. <laughs> yeah. so. We'll pick our Martini then. <laughs> All right, Nick, thanks. <laughs> Very close to Martini. <laughs> and I don't yes, know where you're going to go with that, but I'm done. <laughs> Here is Dustin Ackley. Actually, Trumbo's going to hit for Ackley now, so he'll come off the bench. Mark Trumbo was acquired earlier this year, and you see the numbers. He got it from Arizona back in early June, hitting just 146. Well, this is the guy I got to talk to Kirk Gibson about. Kirk had him over at Arizona. He shoots the ball to the right side. He's a puzzling guy to me because at one time I thought he was going to just ignite the baseball world with his power, and he's got tremendous power. But he just hasn't developed into that guy. I'm sure Gibby would have a lot of information about Trumbull. 
Well, Trumbo, one of those guys that uh, when he was with the Angels, the organization he broke in with did hit a ton of home runs. I mean, he had like uh, 30 homers two or three of those years with the Angels. Knocked in 100 runs at one point. There's a foul back to the screen by Brad Miller. Twelve five Tigers have the lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Miller a single a double an RBI and a stolen base. Foul away. Down a triple A, Toledo was 1 0 with an 08 9 ERA in his last 18 games with the Mud Hens, so he was pitching well, just two earned runs in over 20 innings. Miller thought about it but did not go after it. Yeah, he gets ahead of Miller 0 2, and then he bounces that breaking ball, trying to get Miller to maybe swing out of the zone. You have that luxury when you're ahead in the count. Always figured that a pitch up in the zone that's way out, it's just a waste pitch because that's something hitters recognize early. It's a ball up, they see it. The ball down, they might swing it. Crowell fires the second one and the relay is in time. Double play. Inning over. Let's go to the ninth in Seattle. the top of the ninth inning they pounded out 19 hits in this game tonight. How about Castellanos? Yeah, a lot of the Tigers getting on the board but Nick Castellano having a big night. First hit of the game for him was a home run and then it's followed up by three straight singles and when the going's good you get a few hits like his last one here a little looper over Robin Scano that drives in another run a big night for Nick four hits in four plate appearances. Do I hear five? This will be a, uh, a leadoff hitter here in the ninth inning in search of fifth hit. Castellanos will face a new pitcher. That'll be Carson Smith. So Bimel is out. He came out on the seventh, got through the eighth, and now gives way to Smith. And Castellanos shoots it back up the middle. Miller will charge. Got him. One gone. A couple of defensive changes for the Seattle Ball Club. 
Trumbo stays in the game. He'll play in left. Taylor now is the new second baseman and Smith the new pitcher. And Chris Taylor takes over for Robinson Cano. They're going to give him a little break here in this game. Here's Anthony goes two out of four triple single. Carson Smith has a team high 35 appearances now. It's done really well. Opponents came in batting just 175 against him. He's come out throwing strikes here in the ninth. Roots Rondon and his red glove warming up in the bullpen. Oh, he'll probably get the ninth for the Tigers. Here's the 0-2. Ghost takes low and away. One ball, two strikes. Tigers tonight have hit four home runs. Oddly enough, all of them solo shots. Swing and a miss. Down he goes. Two gone. Ghost retired. Well, join us again tomorrow. Middle game in this series against the Mariners. Our coverage begins at 9 o'clock with Tigers Live. Tigers Mariners tomorrow at 9. You'll see it right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Here's Andrew Romine. It's been a nice night for Romine getting a chance to start at first base tonight. A couple of singles, a couple of RBIs. Really, he's been solid all year, batting 324. You look at Andrew Romine, and you understand why. He's not a guy to lunch. He doesn't jump around. He's got real good body control. Hitting and pitching are very similar in that. When you have good body control, you usually have pretty good results. One and two. Relatively short, compact swing. Quick to the ball. One dart slowing away. Two balls, two strikes. Got him strike three. That'll end the inning as Smith comes out of the pen and gets a one, two, three, nine. Looks like Bruce in the bottom of the ninth.
It's the four home runs, the first four runs of the game by Detroit, all coming off of Sasha Iwakuma. You can see JD getting in the act there after Castellanos and Victor both homered. And the last one off Iwakuma was Cespedes. None of them were short either. Tigers really coming out swinging. Here are the numbers the Tigers on top 12 5 as we go to the bottom of the ninth. 19 Tigers hits in this game. And they need three more outs. And the man to get them is Bruce Rondon. Rondon will face Zanino, Jackson, and Seeger here in the ninth inning. One ball, no strikes on Mike Zanino. Rondon has uh, struck out five and five appearances, a little over three innings of work at the big league level for Rondon. And he throws a strike right at the knees. One ball, one strike on Zanino. Here's the 1 1. Breaking pitch there, and uh, Rondon, of course, I think the key to his success is developing that slider, which has become a pretty good pitch for him. Not just that upper 90s fastball. Well, it's typically the secondary pitches that really make a pitcher at the big league level. Most guys have one primary pitch, and most of the time, that's a fastball. They command that the best. But it's their secondary pitches, either a changeup or a breaking ball, that keeps them in the big leagues and allows them to have success. We'll get back to the screen. Two and two on Zanino. Jackson waiting on deck. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Got ahead and then buried the breaking ball down in the zone. Rondon picks up his first strikeout. And there's that slider you're talking about, Mario. And a good one. So what a way here in the ninth. That'll bring up Austin Jackson. Jackson one for three. Single, he's also walked in this game. Is the last hitter that Alfredo Simon faced to lead off the sixth inning. He got a base hit. Or excuse me, his last at bat in the sixth inning. Simon gave up an RBI double, an RBI triple, and a three run homer. But his offense. Picked him up tonight with uh, plenty to spare. 19 hits for Detroit. They lead by seven. Fouled away. 0 oh and 2 on Jackson. Here's Alfredo. He got behind a lot early in the game. David Price just bored tonight. Yeah, he is. <laughs> But that right there is a pretty impressive ball. Yeah, I mean, if you're into blowing bubbles, and there it goes. He's not going to pick that up, is he? Well, let's not film it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we got him. Let's see, unwinding a baseball, blowing gargantuan bubbles as well. Don't forget that he's got his name penciled in as a pitch hitter. That's right. He normally does every night, just in case. All star David Price. We didn't congratulate him. He's making his fifth appearance in the All Star game. And where would the Tigers be without oh. David's contribution this year? I don't know. 
Jackson again waits on a one two. It was that breaking ball, but he laid off. Two and two on Jackson. Kyle Seeger waiting on deck. Got him. Strike three. Cut for Joe. Punches out. Jackson two away. Another slider. This one he painted on the outside corner. Let's take a look at it here. That's just a tough pitch to hit. So. Austin Jackson did what he could do best. Watch it. Joe West getting tired. He rings him up. Let's move it along. Here's their last chance now. Kyle Seeger with two outs. That's a pretty easy 96 mile an hour right there. It doesn't look like there's a lot of effort. Very fluid delivery of Simon ball seems to jump out of his hand. Uh, excuse me. Rondon. Ninety six there from Rondon fouled back one ball one strike. Hardy was good again tonight out of the Detroit bullpen. He went one to third scoreless, struck out three batters. Kroll pitched the eighth. Rondone here in the ninth. One strike away from doing a great job out of the pen. Tiger fans getting with it here in the ninth inning. Here's the one two. Swing and a miss struck him out. Bruce Rondone strikes out the side in the ninth. And the Tigers win game one in this series 12 to 5. Very impressive offensive output tonight here in Seattle. We'll be back to Safe Go Field.